In this video, we're going to be talking about hyperinflations. Now, hyperinflations are situations where there is an excessive, an excessive growth in money supply. This is usually caused by governments printing too much money. So the governments are are printing a ton of money. Usually they are doing this to finance their deficits, make payments, etc. So, you know, what, what qualifies as, as hyperinflationary? So when inflation rates are in, a, in excess of 50% per month, imagine that, imagine your rent going up 50% each month and what a toll it would take on your budget, on your pocket. Okay, inflation rates are more than 50% per month. This is when we say there is hyperinflation in an economy okay now uh, there are three different examples uh, that are classic to the understanding of hyperinflation inflations you can read more about the one in weimar germany there is one in zimbabwe that is more recent uh, in the in the 2000s And then the recent uh, one is Venezuela. So this is the recent one. So we're gonna take a look at what happened in Zimbabwe. Now in Zimbabwe, uh, the official currency was the Zimbabwean dollar from 1980 to 2009. Um, hyperinflation in Zimbabwe led to the Zimbabwean dollar being reduced to one of the lowest values currency units in the world. Uh, there were banknotes earlier that were of the denomination of a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, but but uh, the highest denomination um, note that was printed by the central bank was. A uh, hundred trillion dollar note. Now you might wonder, well, hundred trillion dollars seems like a lot, but it really depends on, you know, what is the exchange rate uh, when we compare it to the U.S. dollar or to any other currency. Now, in nineteen eighty, in nineteen eighty. One Zimbabwean dollar equaled 1.54 US dollars. But by 2009, 10 trillion Zimbabwean dollars equaled 3 US dollars. Imagine that. Imagine the the devaluation of or the depreciation of the Zimbabwean currency. Now, in Zimbabwe, there was um, an economic crisis before 1999 for several years, and they also experienced periods of drought, which adversely affected uh, the agricultural output of the nation. And it, it was an agri it still is an agriculturally dependent nation. It, it used to get its revenues from selling cash crops like tobacco or maize. Uh, they also had done some re land reallocation which suppressed the output, uh, agricultural output, and that fell uh, a lot, more than 50% between 2000 and 2009. So the government resorted to printing of the Zimbabwean dollar like, like crazy. And uh, what happens is, what happens in any type of scenario like that is that you have a situation where the government is printing money
and prices are going up because there is so much liquidity in the system, people are getting more and more cash to spend on goods and services. So they're going to demand more goods and services and prices are constantly going up, going up. So what that leads to sellers doing is also hoarding. Sellers don't want to, if prices are are rising rapidly, sellers are going to hoard um, and not sell uh, different products. So the hoarding creates a supply, a shortage in supply, which further raises prices. Okay, and so this, this this phenomena keeps on happening where there's hoarding, there's government printing money, and all of that is is related to inflation and really hyperinflation over a period of time. So going back to the Zimbabwean example, uh, this was the $100 trillion note. And you can see here uh, what happened with Z- the Zimbabwean consumer price inflation. It soared and it was at 2,600% in July of 2008. Look at uh, what, it, what it did, what this printing of money did. Uh, to Zimbabwean inflation okay this is this is crazy high and uh, each month the inflation obviously exceeded 50 percent now there were all these uh, signs that were posted that were that were really I mean you can find some humor in this where a sign was posted outside um, a restroom which said Toilet paper only to be used in this toilet. No cardboard, no cloth, no Zimbabwean dollars, no newspaper. So it was it was alluding to the fact that the Zimbabwean dollar had no value or had lost its value. And, uh, you know, in this time of hyperinflation, the real GDP or the economic output also contracted for most of the period. Okay. And so you can see on the x-axis, you have time. And you can see that real GDP growth uh, uh, on an annual basis has had been negative for so many years. And uh, the production of tobacco, which is a cash crop, was declining. And here is uh, another sign, another poster that was highlighting what was going on. So even if you had those trillion dollars or billion dollar notes that the government was printing, you had people who were starving. And uh, you also had, you also have this problem of supermarket shelves uh, being emptied because of all these price controls that were put in place. So you can take a look at that. There are many countries that have experienced hyperinflation in history. There's a list of these in this uh, this uh, document, this article is on iLearn. Now, Zimbabwe experienced 2,600% uh, annual inflation. Uh, Hungary was another example. Take a look at that, what, what that inflation is. 1.295 times 10 to the 16. It sounds absolutely crazy. I don't even know how to make sense of that. And uh, you also have this situation where you know, your, the purchasing power of your currency in, in hyperinflationary episodes is, is really low. So here you see that 100 billion Zimbabwean dollars could buy three eggs. And, uh, and, and this was in 2008. So subsequently, Zimbabwe had to give up their currency and now they use the US dollar as their currency and uh, the South African rand. So this was about uh, Zimbabwe. And recently, we've seen something about Venezuela, which is very similar. And I'll play a video which, which will highlight the, the issue.
We've been telling you about shortages in Venezuela for a while. Now they're impacting people in a very personal matter. Birth control is not only tough to find, it is extremely expensive. For more on what the shortage could mean for Venezuela, let's turn to CNN's Rafael Romo. Uh, Rafael, tell us more about this situation because birth control is so expensive, but many people can't even find it, even if they have the money. That's right. That's uh, the main problem here, that you can go from pharmacy to pharmacy in Caracas and in other cities in Venezuela. And even if you have the money, you can't really find any means of contraception, uh, be it condoms or even birth control pills. And just to give you an idea about how bad the situation is, Aisha, for example, the average Venezuelan makes, when it comes to minimum monthly wage, 5,600 bolivars. The box of condoms is 4,700 bolivars. So if you make the math, you would have to spend 85% of your monthly income to buy a box of condoms. And that can uh, tell you exactly how bad the problem is. If you put it in dollars, Aisha, at, a, at a, an exchange rate of 6.3 per mm -hmm. one, that's $755 as expensive as an iPhone would be. 750 plus dollars for box of condoms that is mind-boggling in and of itself but this is something that has you know some real implications i'm talking specifically about public health that's exactly right we were looking at a study by uh, the the world bank and out of 21 countries in latin america venezuela is number five when it comes to teen pregnancies it also has one of the highest rates of STDs specifically we're talking about HIV so this is a problem that goes beyond just the personal matter we're mm -hmm. talking about a public health issue here yeah and with that being said as you give us those those statistics those shocking statistics quite frankly because I never knew um, the HIV rates were that high and teen pregnancy was such a problem the question obviously next is what is the government doing about all of this well this is a symptom of a much larger problem Aisha uh, be it that Venezuela imports just about everything it consumes not having access to dollars creates it makes a problem even worse and just to give an idea for example last year president maduro announced the uh, construction of a factory a condom factory in venezuela which actually happened the problem is that there's not enough mm -hmm. that the factory is producing for the entire population and even if they were there are some questions as to the quality of the condoms being produced in venezuela so it is it is definitely a great concern not only for venezuela but for people who monitor health issues in that part of the world yeah absolutely 755 dollars per box of condoms i mean this is no life laughing matter this is why we're putting this in context for our viewers okay so you see that this is this video spoke for itself, but you see that hyperinflations can be such a menace for public health issues.